Have a look here. Holy smokes, that is dark. This oil, it hasn't been changed in a long, long time. Hey, it yeah. stinks tight as hell, yo. Can I get a half inch wrench off? What the hell is that, man? What the hell is a half inch, man? What do you mean? It's half between 12 and 13. This is 2018, you know? man. We don't use those half inch and three quarters and stuff no well, more. Well, Mustang Alex needs a half inch wrench, man. All uh, right, you know what? Let me teach you something today. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do an oil change today on this Toyota Corolla. And there ain't no such thing as half inch or three quarter inch or whatever fractional increments you want to use for bolts. We have 10s, 12s, 14s, millimeters, you know? So, so you're saying it doesn't have like a 9 16 It's got some 114 mil. All right, oh, no. I'll give, give it a shot. Give it a shot, man. Let's do an oil change Let's on this. Let's see what this uh, import stuff here is all about. Today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change. And before we can start, I have to show you the materials that we need to do this. So first, we need the oil and a good oil filter, one of good quality, preferably. We need a wrench to take off the drain plug. And I have here a different variety of uh, tools to take off the oil filter. So the most common would be the band wrench. Or you could use the oil filter claw. Or this one here is my favorite, the channel locks. And also we'll need somewhere to drain the oil into. So you'll need a good drain pan that won't splash or leak anywhere. And to fill the oil, you don't want to spill any on your engine, so you'll need a good funnel. And to lift the vehicle safely, you're going to need a floor jack and two jack stands. Never lift the vehicle with the jack alone and attempt to go under it, always support it with jack stands. Or in my case here, we're going to use a two post lift. And I'm going to introduce my friend Mustang Alex to help us do this oil change today. Alrighty. So let's get started. Let's do it. So tell everyone, what do we do first? Well, first thing I like to do when doing an oil change, make sure the oil cap comes off. If you can't fill it, don't drain it. Not a good idea. Secondly, anytime a car comes in, if it's not my own, I always check the oil. Just to make sure there's nothing funky going on in there. You know, you see cream or something like that, that's a sign that you might have a bigger problem and changing oil might make it worse. But in our case, it's just dirty. Don't forget the light, man. We're gonna need, we're gonna need this light so we can get inspection to upsell. But it's always a good opportunity when doing an oil change to check the entire vehicle because most people when to do service is the only real time that we have a chance to look at anything else on the ground with the vehicle. And after the oil change, and I'll show you over to go over other parts that we should look at. All right, so after we've lifted the vehicle, we need to first locate our oil filter and our drain bolt. So here we have the oil filter here. We have our drain bolt over here. Make sure you're not draining your transmission because sometimes certain cars might have a filter screwed on. Uh, Subaru is a good example. Uh, you drain that, you're going to have a bad day. You'll know because the axles are coming out of it, it's a trance. Alright, so back over here, let's start with cracking the drain plug. That's a little too loose, so we're going to try... It's not 9 sixteenths or a half inch. I told you already, it's a 14! Alright. See, I remember, imports metric. Domestic don't even use uh, Imperial anymore. They're all metric too now. Well, I'm old school, man. <laughs> See how that oil looks coming out of there. It's been a while. A good trick to make sure you don't get oil in your hands, push the drain plug into the oil pan while you're holding it there. And right when you're on the last threads, go up and out of the way. And that way, you get minimal oil on your hands. While the oil filter is, is over here and the oil is draining, let's crack the filter free. Dan links the channel locks. So do I. All right, our filter's free. Wait for the oil to finish draining, then we'll take off the filter. Some cars don't have spin-on filters. Some of them are cartridge. So you may need other tools for different vehicles. A lot of older cars like this Toyota will have a spin-on filter is what they're called. Also, 
Always check to make sure you have a drain plug gasket. Make sure you have a good quality gasket. As you can see here, the gasket didn't come with the oil drain plug, which means it's probably still stuck on the oil pan, like it is here. If you put two gaskets on top of each other, it's going to leak. Again, not going to be a good day. That thing's going to drain all day, man. So uh, while it drains, let's be productive and let's check the rest of the vehicle if there's anything else wrong with it. So I'm going to start with shaking this wheel here. You're going to want to shake it first from side to side just to make sure you feel no play and then you're going to want to check up and down. And usually I just give it a good pull this way and that way and it feels really tight here. So we're going to want to do this on all four wheels. Feel a little bit of shake in this one. It's got a little bit of shake side to side and also up and down. So that could also mean that the wheel bearing is gone. I usually like to confirm it by giving it a little spin and listen for noise. It's a little bit of light noise from it. I don't know if you can hear it over the camera. So we're gonna have to replace that wheel bearing. And also I like to check the ball joints as well with the pry bar to just see if there's any play in it for up and down, if there's movement. And usually what I do here on this one, I stick the pry bar in there and just pry up on it a bit. And if this thing moves up and down, then the ball joint's gone. But on certain style cars, depending on the suspension geometry, you may have to squeeze the ball joint to see for the play. And you also want to check your CV boost to inspect for any tears. This one looks good. And then we can get this one here. Looks good. And we'll also check the other side as well. And if we can see the belts from here, it'll be good as well. You want to inspect your drive belts and make sure there's no cracks. And this belt looks like it's in fairly good condition. I'll just show you an example of a drive belt that's needing to be replaced. I just did one earlier today. So if your drive belt looks like this, with uh, any cracks in there, you're gonna have to get it replaced. But in this case, we're still good. All right, now that the oil's finished draining, let's reinstall the drain plug. Make sure your gasket's there. Threads in good by hand. Don't force it. As soon as it starts to tighten down, depending upon the type of gasket you have, just pass it Don't strip my drain plug, by the way. I won't. Don't worry. All right. Let's get the filter off. I've already broken it free. Spin it loose. Let it drain. And then the rest of the way off. And make sure you use a quality oil filter. Put a little bit of oil on the outside seal. That's pre-lubed too. And just as it's tightening down, just as you feel it start to torque up, just give it almost a quarter turn. Done. Now we can lower the vehicle. All right, now it's time to fill the oil. Grab our funnel, stick it in. Sure it's good. Hey, how much are you pouring in there? It's not a Mustang, you know, it only takes six liters. About uh, two so far. All right, put in another two. Don't pour all your oil in. It's a good idea to check the level. If you overfill it, uh, you could cause issues with the engine, including damage, you blow out seals. And if you overfilled it, you gotta drain it again, eh? Yeah, nobody wants to do that. That's a hot mess right there. How are we looking? About halfway up the stick. Fill a little more. Pay about another liter or so, because we don't forget the oil filter is going to take a little bit of oil. Yeah, after you start the car, the oil level will go down. So it's a good idea to double check it after you start it, and then top up when you're done. Well, let me give it a start and let's see how much oil we have to add. Make sure you put your oil cap on before you start it. Hands clear. Always check it twice, because when the engine runs, it's gonna splash oil around on the stick. Are we on the money? It's about halfway there, top up a little more, and should be good to go. Gotta wait for a little bit of time for oil to drop down to the stick. All right. Perfect, good as new. Make sure your oil cap's on, your dipstick's all the way down, no tools under the hood, you're good to go. Well, there you have it. That's in a nutshell how to do an oil change. Thanks for joining us today. And that's it for today. See you guys next time. Take it easy.